Hi, my name is Lok Trin, and I am a Senior Database Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Amazon TimeStream data with Amazon SageMaker. We will analyze some sample data, train a machine learning model, and then deploy the model to SageMaker hosting services so that applications can make inferences and predictions. As part of the exercise, we'll use Amazon TimeStream, a fast, scalable, fully managed database that is purpose-built for storing and analyzing time series data along with Amazon SageMaker, a fully managed machine learning service. We'll start by generating data and storing it in our TimeStream table, and then we'll use SageMaker to train a machine learning model. SageMaker provides several built-in machine learning algorithms that you can use for a variety of problem types. You can also bring your own algorithm or use your code to access popular ML frameworks to build models. In our exercise, we will use a built-in random cut forest algorithm to detect anomalous data points in our data set. When we create a training job, SageMaker launches the ML compute instances and trains the model using the training data set in our TimeStream table. This results in model artifacts, which we would then use in our endpoint. After we train our model, we can deploy a persistent endpoint using SageMaker hosting services. We'll deploy this endpoint using the model artifacts produced by our training job. This gives us a simple RESTful interface that applications can use to get inferences from the model. In our exercise, We'll send requests to this endpoint from the SageMaker notebook to emulate a client application. So to recap with a high level look of the architecture uh, of our exercise, we will generate and store sample data in TimeStream. Then we will launch a SageMaker training job using TimeStream for training data to create a model. We'll create an endpoint with SageMaker using our model artifacts. And this provides a RESTful interface for client applications to use our model. So with that, I will step into my console and this is my Amazon TimeStream console. I will create my TimeStream database and just choose a standard database and provide a name. And that is all I need to create my first TimeStream database. Within this database, I will also create a table. And the data that we're working with today will mimic a DevOps scenario. So I will name it DevOps data. I will also need to provide uh, how long I want the data to be retained in memory. So I will use one day and the uh, retention period for MechNeg store. And that's all I need to create my time stream table. I will now step into my EC2 instance. And here I am uh, logged into the console of an EC2 instance. And in this EC2 instance, I have already installed Python and the AWS SDK libraries. I have a Python script, and I will uh, take a peek at that script. Uh, and this script is available in the AWS Labs GitHub repository uh, so that you can inspect and uh, try out on your own. But within this script, we can see that there are arguments for uh, the database name and the table name that I just created. There are some functions to make a TimeStream API calls to, uh, to write data to the time stream table. Uh, and scrolling all the way to the top, uh, we can see that this script generates uh, several measurements around a DevOps scenario. So you can see some CPU metrics, some memory metrics, uh, some network metrics. And this will continuously generate data into our time stream table. So I will execute this script to write to my database and my table. And this script is going to run continuously and generate random data. And we will want to run this script for some significant amount of time so that there is data uh, enough for our model to be trained on. So I will let this run and pause this video. And we will return to look at SageMaker when there is more data. OK. So now that I have let this script run for some time, we should have enough data in the TimeStream database and table uh, for us to build our model. So I will step into my uh, Amazon SageMaker notebook instance and uh, open this sample notebook. So this SageMaker notebook is available in the AWS Labs GitHub repository as well. And it provides an example of how to visualize some TimeStream queries train a random cut force model and deploy the model endpoint. And then we will also use that endpoint to detect anomalies in our sample data. 
uh, with, within this SageMaker uh, notebook instance, I have also already installed the Python uh, SageMaker SDK so that we can interact with TimeStream. And I will just kind of walk through this code uh, one cell at a time. Now in the first cell, we are initializing the TimeStream client. Uh, there are some configuration values here for the database name and the table name. And I will uh, let that code cell initialize. We also will be creating a helper function, and this will allow us to visualize anomaly scores later when we have our model. And this is an example of how to query time stream for the uh, attributes of a table. So we can see some of the dimensions and some of the uh, attributes that are created by our continuously running Python script. Here is um, another example of how to query from this table. And here we're going to look at the CP utilization uh, within the last 15 minutes. Uh, we're also going to store some of this uh, information off so that we can use at a later uh, point in this notebook. But here is a tabular view of some of the uh, measures that have been recorded in this table. So you can see that uh, there is an Apollo microservice within the US East 1 uh, availability zone, US East 1 1 availability zone. Um, and the uh, measure value is 46.78. Uh, we're also going to create this function that's going to allow us to uh, query the CPU utilization for a specific host. Um, and we'll just store this function off for use later. Um, but we can also just query in line here. Um, and this is going to be a, an example query to get the average of all the CPU utilization for all hosts. We're also going to store off a couple of these um, results for later usage. But here is a tabular view of the average CPU utilization for some of the hosts across the uh, the region average. And then a call back to the function we created two cells ago. Um, we can also uh, make these queries uh, programmatically, calling that function, passing in these parameters to get a uh, the CPU utilization for specific microservices or specific instances. So in this case, we will query the CPU utilization for the past seven days for these specific region cells, microservices, etc. And this is the result in a uh, tabular view. We can also use SageMaker to visualize this data. So here I will plot that previous table and we can see the CPU utilization for this particular host uh, kind of going back and forth between just under 40% utilization and just over 60% utilization. So now that we have some sample data in our table, we can also use SageMaker to train a model. So here we're going to train a random cut forest model uh, to look at the CPU utilization history. And we'll use this later to detect anomalies. But you can see uh, in this code cell that we will provision one training instance of the M4X large uh, instance type. We're going to output our model artifacts to an S3 bucket uh, and with the random cut force, we'll run uh, 50 trees with up to 512, 512 samples per tree. So I will kick off this uh, training job, and SageMaker will provision the instances for training this. And this will take some time, so I will pause, and we will return when we have a model trained. Now that our training job is complete, we have the model artifacts output to S3. We can also inspect some of the outputs within SageMaker for information about this model. For example, we can see the average number of nodes or the average tree depth uh, within this random cut forest. Uh, we will take the output of this model and deploy an endpoint. So the next cell block uh, provides an example of how to deploy that model. Uh, here we are using one instance with this instance type. And this takes some time to deploy and provision the endpoint. So I've gone ahead and run this cell block 
and we now have an endpoint with the random cut forest uh, based on the model from the previous uh, cell block. Now, using this endpoint, we can start to uh, produce some predictions. Uh, here, we are taking uh, the CPU utilization from our training data, and we're just going to push it back into our um, endpoint to see what the anomaly scores for those data points would be. So here, uh, just a quick look at some of our data points. These would be the anomaly scores predicted based on our model. And here you are seeing that we are hitting the endpoint that we previously deployed. And again, this is a tabular view of those data points uh, with the anomaly score uh, side by side. And we can also visualize that data so here is that data set uh, with the utilization bouncing between just under 40% and just over 60% and the anomaly score uh, depicted here in orange. What we'll do next is we'll grab another uh, time series from a different host uh, that has a similar profile and we're going to take uh, the data points from that host with these CPU utilizations. Uh, and again, use the endpoint that we deployed to make uh, some predictions on the anomaly score. So here again, side by side in a tabular view uh, are the CPU utilization for this uh, new host that we just queried and the anomaly score produced by our model. Visualizing that, here we see this host has a fairly similar profile. Uh, going to uh, just over 60% down to just below 40%. And again, in orange, the anomaly score produced by our model. Um, what I also want to share here is an example of how this looks when we take a look at a host with a different profile. So here we want to query a number of hosts with uh, a fairly high average CPU utilization. Uh, so we're going to uh, search for uh, one particular host where the average value is above a certain threshold. And here uh, is a tabular view of the host that we found. And we'll look at the CPU utilization of that host. So you can see that this is uh, a little bit higher than the previous two hosts that we looked like we looked at that were between 40 and 60 percent utilization. And so we'll calculate the anomaly score of this host, and uh, we see that the score is uh, in the high threes uh, for these five instances or these five data points. And visualizing this host, uh, we can see that the utilization is up in the mid 90 percentile. Uh, or in the mid 90 percent, uh, with the anomaly score uh, close to four, so substantially higher than the previous two hosts that we were inspecting. We can also do this to look at uh, a host um, that has a fairly low CPU utilization. So here we are looking where the average CPU utilization is below a certain threshold. Uh, we've output this here in a tabular view. And then we will query for the time series on this host uh, to get the CPU utilization. Again, using the um, model endpoint, we're going to compute the anomaly score. And visualizing this host, we can see the CPU utilization uh, pretty low here, most of it being under 10%, uh, seemingly, and the orange depicting the anomaly score. So we can see um, how the model uh, outputs anomaly scores based on the utilization. Uh, we will now query to look for uh, hosts to find some uh, anomalies in this, uh, in this fleet. So here I've uh, queried our uh, time stream table, uh, uh, creating a time series with uh, bins and looking for the CPU utilization. We're going to take this data set 
and we're going to pass it into our model to look for uh, data points that exceed a certain anomaly threshold. So here I've set the threshold at 3.9. And we will pass uh, this data set into the SageMaker endpoint. Uh, and the output is that uh, almost 25% of our data points are exceeding this anomaly threshold. So this is uh, an example of how we can use time stream data uh, with a SageMaker model and uh, then deploy an endpoint and then use that endpoint with uh, a new data set to then detect uh, anomalies within our data set. Recapping what we did in this exercise, we generated sample data and stored it in a time stream database. We launched a SageMaker training job using time stream to create a model. Then we deployed an endpoint using our model so that anomaly scores could be calculated on new data points. Thank you for watching. To learn more about AWS and Amazon TimeStream, please visit the Amazon TimeStream website.